Hey everybody, it's Made in Abyss Weekly with Best Guy Ever. Ah, that's me. Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Friday, Friday, uh, Katy Perry uh, is our special guest today. Hi everybody, it's me, Katy Perry. I'm the biggest anime fan of the world. Oh, I gotta go do a new record deal. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Oh, maybe she'll be back next week. That'd be a real treat. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. New <laughs> new right, character. Yeah. New character on the Made in Abyss Weekly, Katy Perry. All right. Let's this do is it. A, we just, we've <laughs> just watched episode five of Made in Abyss. Incinerator. Weeks, that's right. Deep. Um, I say five weeks deep, but, you know, we started on the third week. Whatever. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this episode, continuing from where the last one left off, mm -hmm. um, once again, sort of a slow-paced episode. Yep. really feels yep. like this show is... At this point, like I'm, I'm like, okay, this is the pace the show is going. Like we can just kind of take a step back and not expect it to pick up at any point. I the think. the first episodes are like almost always the fastest, and the I mean, just by nature of any show, they've got to do all their setting up initially. And some shows right. really fuck it up and do it badly. I mean, this show did it great. We I I loved the first three episodes and thought they were fantastic. Right. But really, it's natural that it slows down now, which. You know, like, if it was, a, if I could have my way and everything was perfect, I would like things to move a little bit faster, but, you know, it, it's I mean, understandable. And... I wouldn't even say that the actual mm -hmm. plot has slowed down. Like, th the show mm -hmm. was slow from the start, really, like, in terms of, like, getting on the adventure and going to yeah. do the actual plot. Um, it's just less dense now. Because That's exactly it. That's exactly really right. We just like, got these two characters on this adventure at this point. You're, you're darn right. And hopefully we'll have some new characters to spice things up as we move along. But uh, let's it's get into it. looking that way. Yeah. So, uh, first off, this episode just opens with, like, the exact scene from the end of the previous episode. But since we didn't really mention it, um, I like how... That, that scene undercuts the sense of victory where yeah, they reach yeah. the bottom and they're like, oh, we did it. We won. We won. And then, like, they see a big fucking monster and she's like, let's get out of here before one of those uh, another one comes and eats us. You know, it's like yeah. reminding you at all times, don't get excited. This is a dark story. You know, <laughs> don't yep. think this is going to go OK. I'm sure that will be uh, pervasive. And I hope it gets more fucked up as we go. And the episode already we get pretty fucked up real fast in this episode. Yeah. There uh, is a very utterly horrifying monster mm -hmm. that's introduced here, which is a... What the hell was it called? It was called a Corpse Weeper. A Corpse Weeper. Corpse weeper. According to Horrible Subs, at least. Yeah, so this is a, a monster, a big bird thing that, like, eats the guts of travelers and then mimics their cries for help yeah. so that other people <laughs> will run in to try and help them. Uh, yeah, that is horrific, and... Mm -hmm terrifying and uh we see this thing literally slurping out a dude's guts right before one of them comes and grabs our main character yeah so yeah <laughs> maybe a little unsettled like the monsters in this show have been terrifying from the start like the one in episode mm -hmm. one is a big scary monster but this one is more unnerving and conceptually frightening and absolutely absolutely right yeah uh both in what it's it's, it's doing the scariest thing that we've seen in the show yet which is devour yeah. a personal like well not a lie but ri rip out their guts and you know we like th this show really and i i've noticed there's there's several times in this episode and the others that that i i like this this show is not squeamish this show is not afraid to show you human guts uh, like later on, we see Rico just like puking everywhere, and it does yeah. not pull its punch. I, I I really like that and appreciate that grittiness, especially with these childlike characters. It just adds yeah. a layer of authenticity that like a lot of shows about like kids this age wouldn't do. But this show doesn't do that. Yeah. It's not afraid, and I like it a lot, and I, I give it a lot of credit. Way to go, guys! Yeah, I was um I'm. I'm wondering, like, how far they will take it because that's the question. Yeah, we do see guts in this episode, but it's very like um, simplistic looking. True. Like, we don't see like a gory scene. Like, we're communicated the terror of this thing is eating a guy's intestines, but like, it doesn't look fucked. You know, like the yeah. guy's face is kind of a. Uh, not like that deep. His face is not very drawn in. There's just kind of like a little trail of blood coming off of him. You know, we see little bits of blood. It's not like horrifyingly gory. In I'm... fact, actually, the dream <laughs> sequence is a little bit spooky. Oh yeah, that, that's true. That's true. I um, uh, this show, I'm ready for that elf and lead shit. Let's get let's get yeah. all the way in. Let's do it. Well, I'm just wondering about it because people <laughs> have insisted so many times that this manga is ex extremely dark and terrifying and and perverse and it's sexually charged and all that. But I. I don't know if the anime is downplaying it at all, but mm -hmm. 
I really feel like it's trying to keep this certain kind of brisk tone where, I, I mean, I guess it's doing a good job of not suddenly making things feel, like, awkwardly terrifying when they don't have to. Right, like, I agree. If if this was a moment where we are supposed to, like, be in the shoes of the, the characters, um, you know, to Rico, none of this is, like, that terrifying Mm because she's kind Mm -hmm. of used to this idea that this is what the abyss is and she even kind of like regular this episode there's a scene where he's just like shook you know he's like yeah yeah i i kind of just saw some fucked up stuff and rico's just kind of like look man that's the abyss like it's like that you gotta get used to this and so i feel like maybe the show wants to keep us in her mindset and not make it like you know not frighten us too much to the point where we don't relate to how we're supposed to feel yeah, you know, and you know, I, I I don't think the show is doing um what you can see like with like cartoony violence where it just kind of like downplays it or or it gets so ridiculous that you can't take it seriously. It, it really does feel like in character with the world that like Rico yeah. lives in that we see these sorts of things and that she isn't freaked out by them. But then we've got Reg there. Ironically, the robot is the one more disturbed by these things, like the the more innocent one between the two. Uh, it's an interesting dynamic and feels in character and good. Yeah, we got a lot of confirmations on some things that we uh, yep. were saying yeah. in the previous episode, such as uh, that Reg, his inexperience is going to be his big weakness in mm-hmm. this show. Um, we saw how the, the hunter guy got the drop on him before, and in this episode, a bird gets the drop on them and captures Rico, and Reg's like, oh, fuck, how could I have not, how could I have been so inattentive? And it's like, this is going to be how he gets fucked, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's a great way to like undercut this otherwise really overpowered character you know Mm -hmm. like he would be insanely overpowered if not for the fact that he's so inexperienced he doesn't really know what he's doing and because rico is so weak you know even with her experience which is not that much greater um you know she's in constant peril so yeah yeah these two feel very underpowered at this point it's true though it's it's funny you say that because i mean there was the the power level jump but before we get to that uh i did want to say i i liked and i thought this was interesting so like right away uh, during the scene where Rico gets captured by the corpse sweeper and she's being carried off to the nest and uh, mm-hmm. Rick's having his little panic moment. So like he, he points out that like, oh, no, she's ascending because yeah. she has risen like only it looks like maybe like 100 feet in the air or something like not really a very long distance. But she immediately passes out from how yeah. severe the strain is on her. So this is like quite noteworthy stress that the curse is putting on her, even from right. that like small amount of escalation or uh, or ascension. So that's yeah. pretty serious shit right there. Yeah, you were talking about how we mm-hmm. weren't sure, like they, they established so much about the curse that it was like, yeah. you know, are we gonna have them going back up and stuff? But no, it's more no, like they even can't if go you up. go up a little, mm-hmm. uh, you get you get affected by it. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty drastic. Um, I don't know how high up they were supposed to be because I mean they're gonna have to ascend to go into this treehouse in the second layer. I wonder if that's gonna be. Uh... <laughs> that's true. Maybe it's the speed with which you do it too, because like yeah, she's carried by a bird real fast. Yeah, I mean, I I I feel like like they can play it a little fast and loose in like a moment like that, and like not every time yeah. do they in the, when they go up an incline do we have to like address how severe the curse is being right now. But I guess they were just showing that like in general they want us to keep in mind yeah. when you're going up and any kind of you know when you're around. Rising, it you know, you gotta watch out. It confirms that the curse doesn't hit you all at once uh, mm-hmm. near the top. It's it's right anytime you go up. Um, and hey, huge risk that if we get to layer six and you have to fucking you know climb up a little bit of cliff, you might die. You yeah, know? yeah. But I again, I really do like that because it's a very interesting just environmental hazard to have that forces your yeah. characters to continually progress toward their goal and uh, and just all this downward momentum. I, I it's all this. Sh- I just feel the abyss sucking us down into its depths. I I really like yeah. it. It's everything about this is cool. Uh, so as she's carried away by the bird, uh, that's when we get the the thing that I think we both predicted. I mean, obviously, that, that Reg would unlock uh, his his incinerator power, as it gets titled. So he's now got access to his laser beam, which he promptly uses to save uh, uh, Rico from the bird people while causing massive damage all around and almost killing her. So yeah. this is some pretty serious shit. And this is... Uh, so now now that a Reg has, like, knowingly, consciously unlocked this ability and doesn't immediately pass out. So now even this character was already pretty overpowered... 
uh, where we're just like, th this is like, I feel basically as high as his power level can go. And now there's, yeah. there's going to be some, there, there was some reference to like, oh, you're going to be able to train it and like focus it right. better and, 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 you know, harness right now it, it has, properly. The biggest weakness is that he can't control it right. And he's, and he's so, real shook that he almost killed Rico because that blast was just too right. fucking big. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, he got lucky that she's not dead, mm -hmm. and there's a good, like, so he's going to be really hesitant about using this power, obviously. Yeah. Um. So, even more so than the actual danger of the blast, what I think will get utilized is his fear of using the blast. Is I think what what will affect mm -hmm. the narrative more because obviously if he shoots he's not gonna fucking kill her in the middle of the story. I wonder if they'll pull uh, like an Ang firebending kind of thing where he like uses it. like in this case he didn't hurt Rico at all but maybe he will right. in the future and then he'll be like no I can't do it. Yeah, maybe he'll I feel blast like one of her arms off or something. I, yeah maybe. I feel like limbs are on the chopping block in this show. Like, <laughs> yeah maybe. I'm expecting some loss of limb. Uh, I'd bet, bet against that, but uh, except for uh, Reg, I mean, because he's a robot, he can lose all his limbs and they'll they'll no, fix him up true. or something. That's on the table. Um, but I I wonder if shit, I totally lost my train of thought. Uh, no matter. Uh, let's let's move on. So also, he didn't pass out immediately, but he does eventually pass out. So that is still right. Weakness. Oh, I, yeah. So th they're putting that like limitation on it, where it still is extremely taxing, and that's always going right. to be. I feel like okay, th this is what I was going to say. I feel like okay. So Reg has, we, we like understand now Reg's like highest level power level ability. And we understand that there's some like drawbacks with it. And I, I'm going to be personally watching, um, cause I'm always on the eye out for this, from consuming so much like shonen shit over the years and just anime in general, like how they manage the power level situation. Cause that power can obviously kill pretty much any monster that we've seen up to this point. Um, right. so like they can't just like have him able to use that anytime. So if uh, as the writer he's probably going to use things like this emotional arc that he's got right now like his his development of control over it and like yeah. the i don't know just i, I feel i i'm worried that they'll put like that they'll take too long in like allowing him to use it properly or they'll give him too many like emotional reservations against using it if they like they, you know they pull an ang and an avatar and have him like hurt her and then he won't use it or something because like that's 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 the highest level thing we've got and they gotta right. like keep that on the back burner just to keep the suspense up to make it an interesting narrative so well, i don't know i'm going in this a little deeper than that i expected to but i'm, I'm just going to be on the lookout for how they manage yeah. that and how he uses it well another interesting that happens with mm -hmm. regards to reg's power in this episode um which is our most useful power, the one that is mm -hmm. like most consistently used, is him being able to shoot his arm out. And as soon as we get to level two, we've got a severe wind yeah. that makes it so he can't do that consistently. That's so good shit. that was uh, extremely unnerving to see this moment where it's like, oh shit, like even the most basic power that they need all the time yeah. um, is now <laughs> not completely under their control. And they get out of the situation fairly easily uh in this case but like again i feel like so far we've just been establishing again and again how many ways these two can fuck up how mm -hmm. much all the things we know they do have going for them can't really save them if it comes down to it you know yeah it, it, that's exactly how it should be because like with a narrative like this you've got like a character with s ostensible superpowers um but like just a character using superpowers to solve problems isn't an inherently interesting thing what is interesting is when we see characters presented with problems that they have to find like they have to use intelligence to overcome and get past right. and like those are the kind of challenge and like you can have your superpowers on the table but like i want to be able to put myself in a position where if i was here and i had these powers what would I do to solve this problem? And as long as they right. keep doing things like that, they keep putting obstacles in the way and our characters find ways around them. Obviously, we're still in like low level shit, but I feel like with this series, and it, it really does remind me of One Piece a lot in the way they encounter obstacles like that as they go. Um, I feel like it will continue to be interesting. Yeah. By the way, so, I just wanted to say I absolutely love. So so we, we get all the way down through level two at the end of this. There's there's another cool musical montage and we get to the end uh, of level two or layer two or whatever it is. And the inverted forest or what was Yeah, the inverted forest. Just like it's just immediately one of these awesome environments that I absolutely yeah. love. It's it's an upside down fucking forest. There's a waterfall flowing up. For some reason, this is this is basically what we've been waiting for. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ever since pretty much episode one like we've been wanting to see what's below our surface layer like mm -hmm. layer one is beautiful but it is just like a forest you know mm -hmm. layer two is where we're getting into the fucking 
all right, now shit's weird, you know? Now we've got an upside-down forest. Like, this, and you is know, a, this is now inventive, you know? And you know what I love about the idea of the inverted forest? Like, that that idea just makes sense as the as a way that, like, we know that, like, the, the abyss is divided into layers, each with their distinct, like, uh, geological formations and, and, you know, flora and fauna and shit. And so, like, of course it makes sense that, like, the forest layer at the bottom of it, it has, there's just, there's just a bottom to this forest that isn't just, like, stone. It's just, like, the the upside down portion of it so it's just like it's a natural extension of a tree going all the way around the bottom of a layer that you know i wouldn't have thought of that but that's an interesting way of looking at it it just makes a lot of sense to me and i think it's a natural extension of it and i think that's that's really cool i mean the the only thing that doesn't make sense to me is this waterfall flowing up like that's just magic but that's that's not a problem i'm just i'm I'm hoping that we learn a little bit about what's going on what i was curious about is when they're Mm -hmm. like running on the treetops like how yeah. Are they just like super petrified or they don't seem worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I guess like, they're just fearless. Uh, well, I'm just imagining like running on an upside down tree. It would be a bunch of branches, not like a surface. Oh yeah. Know? Um, but I mean, if it's a super petrified tree, I can see it. I didn't think about it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, mm-hmm. to comment a little bit about, uh, some of the more technical stuff on this episode. Sure. Like, there's, first of all, shitloads, shitloads of Foley uh, art in this. Like, tons and tons of sound effects, and Mm -hmm. I thought that was really, like, when they're in the forest, you just hear, like, this cacophony of insects and birds in the distance and stuff. Sounds like they're in a fucking jungle. Yeah. Um, And then there's a moment where it kind of, like, mixes with the soundtrack, where there's, like, this, like, ticking, this TikTok kind of song that comes in when they're hearing the guy calling for help. And at first, I wasn't even sure if that was, like, a sound that was in the show or if it was mm-hmm. the ost and it was just getting me like what what am i hearing like what's this mysterious yeah. shit tiktok and it then... was weird to hear like a kesha cameo in the episode but you know it was still pretty good it was still what is it with bad. you on like you're on like a late 2000s <laughs> pop star thing i don't right know now. man hey kesha's still relevant dude don't disrespect her okay, uh, all right, and on. then we we had um just I just wrote down God OST. There's yeah, so many fucking yeah. amazing songs. In this. <laughs> it's just I really it's it's like I listen to a lot of ASMR, you know, and I yeah. just enjoy watching this show just as like a a, a, a visceral experience and just feeling yeah. all the sound sa- like the sound effects. I, I said every time you were just talking about it. It feels so rich and good, and like even even the part where it's just the montage of them traveling down. Honestly, those might be my favorite parts of the whole episode. When it's just them, just like working on their goal. There's just yeah. there's this beautiful music. This piano's playing. It's relaxing. We see them moving downward, working as a team. I, 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 God, it's great. Yeah. Everything the about this feels great. The part where he uses the where he becomes like a zip line. The two arms. Really the, yes, that was my yeah. favorite part of the whole fucking episode. That's oh, probably it was mine great. Too. Um, I was like, what a, but I, that, that's a new creative way to use your arms, dude. Yes, yeah. way to go. Loved it. I will say, though, that I thought this episode had a bit of an animation downgrade. Yeah, I, I feel like that. maybe that started last episode because it, it hasn't been as strong as the early ones, which were just fucking crazy. Like, yeah, episode yeah. one is just an insane amount of animation. It's just literally animation. a Ghibli show. <laughs> yeah. But, like, this one, um, there's a lot of, like, lingering on a shot. A little longer than maybe it needs to. Like, I, lots I, of places where it just felt like stuff was not moving. I you know, really for, noticed okay. one shot that was just like that. It's them. It's a shot of just uh, Rico and, uh, I mean, you know, the two of them, they're, they're like repelling. But you can see a little bit. You can see the background scrolling as they're moving downward. But they themselves yeah. are, you know, freeze framed. But you can see, like, they didn't animate the arm extending out of Reg's, uh, of his arm thing. So you just see, like, a stationary cable as they're somehow moving down. And I'm like... All right, guys, come on. Let's <laughs> let's put a little effort into this. That would be easy to do. Come on. Well, so yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I don't know if that would be easy to do. Well, no, I, right. I, I was just thinking about it. All you do is you crop out that image, you make a line, and then you just pan that up with the background as you're going. To, it's easy, fucking easy. I can do sure. that shit. There was also some uh, some cool new character designs showed up at the end. Yeah, you only see yeah. them kind of in shadow, but both of them seemed a little bit more like detailed designs than we've seen from most of the characters so far. So mm-hmm. maybe people in the abyss are like weirder and have these are more, like the like, real characters. Th- these are the yeah. characters that like the author was like, all right, it's time to get serious and make characters <laughs> yeah. people are going to remember. Yeah. So to talk about some of the thematic elements in this, um, once again, this is something I talked about before, but it's really being hammered in this fact that Rico sees Reg as a robot. Yeah. And like, that's why she is so 
comfortable with him and like doesn't think of him in like a sexual way mm-hmm. and it's like okay, okay like she she wakes up naked and he's all embarrassed and she's like why are you embarrassed you're a robot you can't fuck that you, almost, don't, it, you don't it care. almost you know? feels mean it almost feels mean the way she said it there i was like come on i mean you know she's just she just yeah. doesn't think of him as a, a human being, like, at all. She really thinks of him as a robot. And yeah, that's yeah. that's obviously going to be, like, a big emotional thing that's going to have to... You're the, absolutely the, right. The other shoe has to drop on that at some point. Like, he clearly mm-hmm. likes her. He clearly has all of the functions of a emotional human. <laughs> and she just hasn't... I don't know if she's, like, on some level, like, willingly ignorant of it. Like, she wants him to be a robot, so she you know, mm. perpetuates that idea. I don't yeah. know. But, like, she says it, like, multiple times this episode. Well, like, she certainly thinks it's cool that he's a robot. So she, like, she like yeah. likes it about him, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, but if there's, like, a, not a malicious thing, but just, like, a, I don't know, unsympathetic I, thing, I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure. I but that definitely favorite... will... Yeah, go, go, go on. Sorry, I think my favorite piece of dialogue in this episode is when um, Reg says, like... Rico's all excited about the power and she like gives it a name and mm-hmm. he's just like I'm not in the mood for that right now I'm feeling yeah. a little shook <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just love the way he said I'm not in the mood you know, I like, like his I like his very matter-of-fact statements about things and though yeah. I don't know something about it I think would normally be kind of annoying but I like it in this case for some reason Reg pulls it off like there's another I scene think it's where because uh, he's yeah. describing the fact that he's emotional like the fact that he's he's mm-hmm. like telling her I'm not in the mood in a very matter-of-fact way but like he's describing the fact that he is like feeling something really intense right now and needs yeah. her to calm down so he can process it you know like there was another moment that wasn't exactly like that it was more of like a, a comedy moment Oh, God damn it. Okay, you know, I, I can't think of it right now. I'll bring it up when I when I think of it. But uh yeah, she uh <laughs> respect his feelings, Rico, you bitch. You're an <laughs> asshole. So my last note is about them mm-hmm. eating each other. Because oh, yes. mm-hmm. we've talked a lot about how the culture of the abyss is that people just kind of have been indoctrinated into this idea that, like, all you want to do is go into the abyss and explore. Like, your life is go. You are going to die in the abyss, but you need to bring new stuff to the people above. You need to give yourself for the greater good of learning about the abyss and exploring further. Mm -hmm. And here we've got that in a very literal way where they're eating this bird that they just saw eating an explorer. And Rico explains, like, yeah, most of what we eat is stuff that has eaten people um, but, you know, those people gave their lives and now their nutrients are back in us and we yeah. are continuing their journey. And, like, you know, it's really that sense of, like, this is what the people believe is that you are giving your life so that the next generation will be able to, you know, go even further. All it's for the what? Circle, all for, the circle all for glory. of life. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. This is their life. This is what everyone does. And you know, I was uh, I was paying more attention to the to the lyrics in like the uh, in the ending theme song, which is just like we're going down. Everyone goes down. This is the abyss. You can't escape. There are dreams, or maybe maybe it was the opening. I, I can't the remember. Lyrics, uh, the lyrics, the OP is definitely like that too. Like the lyrics of them are very literal. It's yeah. like just describing the plot of the show. I, which, I love in literal case lyrics like that. <laughs> yeah, in case you didn't know, it is the two voice actresses who sing the OP and ED. So oh, okay, I didn't it's literally know that. Rico and Reg's voice actresses. That's dope. I love it. I I'm a big fan, of especially the ending theme. It's it's fucking awesome. Yeah, the ED is pretty cute. I like it. I like the video a lot. Yeah. Um. That's all my notes. You got anything else to say about this one? Uh, let me take a look here. Um, I was not really another musical montage I liked. Uh, oh, oh, you know what I did want to say? I, I wanted to give the show, uh, I guess, I don't know, not, not credit or anything. But at the very beginning, um, there's some attention given to these, like, uh, Amagiri plants that oh, yeah. ostensibly seem to function like the star compass that's been lost. So they're just kind of setting us up for, like... Um, you know, there are other ways to, to tell what's what in the abyss. Because, like, right. they, they, Rico went to some effort to say that, like, yeah, like, things get really fucked up in the abyss. And you don't know what weighs what. Um, so they're just kind of pointing out that, like, yeah, like, the, these plants, uh, they always grow. And they, or, or, like, the big leaves point towards the center of the abyss. Because those are, like, yeah. the two things that you have to keep track of uh, when you're in the abyss. Which way to, like, the center and which way is up. And, like, this particular yeah. plant does those things, which is cool. There seems there seems to be a lot of world-building set up in this episode. Like, yeah. 
um, uh, reassuring us that the like things get more intense towards the middle. Like yeah, yeah. With the center of the abyss is where um, it's where the force field refracts the light or whatever. So like there's more wildlife, there's more danger, and the curse is worse. So the closer I, you are to the middle, the worse shit is. I really appreciated um, like when they when they are headed towards the seeker camp. I really I this I really like this stuff when they describe how like specifically because of that uh, as you get farther away from the center of the abyss uh like the animals get less aggressive and yeah. um like the plant life gets less intense it gets like easier just to get around and so naturally uh like they built the seeker camp in one of these like niches that's that's far away from the center uh, just because that's yeah. like the most logical place to do it. it's the calmest place and they've got like a uh, uh like the famous thing there is a telescope so they can see into the center of the abyss even though they're far away and they just talked about like other reasons why it made sense it's like on a downward slope so it works perfectly is like a place for people to meet up before heading down yeah. to la layer but three part, and stuff. Yeah, I, I like the idea that there's no natural formation connecting the top and bottom of this layer. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, there's the there's the upside-down forest, and then there's the ground, but, like, the only way to get there is, like, a man-made structure that connects the two. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I wonder if that had to have been built before they could even go any further into the abyss. Probably, you know? Yeah, this is, like, the result of many generations of work. I'm sure it took a long time to get down deeper and deeper. Um, and I, I thought it was interesting. Okay, so so when they get to the, the bottom of layer two, there's some, uh, they, there's some discussion about, like, how, okay... So we talked last time about how weird and mysterious the, uh, what do they call it, the barrier is, or, like, the force field. Um, yeah. So, like, so they talked about, so the reason why, like, the animals get more aggressive towards the center is because the barrier carries not just light, but nutrients. The yeah. barrier carries, okay, that doesn't make any sense. How does it I carry assumed it meant nutrients? nutrients the same way the sun has nutrients. Like the, sun the sun has no nutrients. I mean, it has it The has sun provides energy. vitamin D. You get vitamin no, no, no. D just from Your body in the synthesizes sun. vitamin D from yeah. within itself because it uses sunlight to do that. I, I mean, if it just wants to say that it, it has the properties of sunlight and creatures like that, I'm totally on board. If it, I just, the way it was phrased was like the, the barrier carries nutrients. Like there's vitamins in the beams or in the thing. Okay, if that's not what it meant. That's fine. That, that, that's not a big deal. It could be what it meant. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Uh, but they said that like, what else I, I was also like wondering about so like they said that like at here at the bottom of layer two like light was thinner so like it was colder and so you know um Rico had to like put on this this cloak or whatever oh and they talked yeah. about how uh, they had like packed winter gear which obviously we're going to see like a cold weather climate in the future oh, yeah. that's that's good that's, we know I like that they reference that, that like layer five or six is the fucking frost layers so. oh yeah that's right you're right okay so it's only obvious that they'd have to pack that kind of shit uh, I like that that's good and obviously they're, they're they're saving the reveal of the winter clothes for them that's gonna be uh yeah. it's gonna be fun um yeah, that, so I don't know. I, I liked all that stuff. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was I feel like it is appropriate to say this didn't really stand out to me as much the second time I watched the episode as the first. But I'm just saying Rico spent a lot of time without her shirt on. I'm just saying that was an extended <laughs> yeah. period of time. It de feels deliberate to me. And this isn't the first time that she's just been naked for basically... I'm not going to say no reason, but, uh, you know, she's just very comfortable walking around naked. Could yeah. this be just the uh, the predilections of the of the mangaka that at is work? The, I mean, if you listen to people <laughs> talk about this manga, uh -huh. uh, almost everyone's... The people who, who want to, you know, have a more meme opinion of it are constantly yeah. saying that it's basically a bunch of pedophilia and torture <laughs> porn. Oh, so, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am down. I'm definitely making that the thumbnail of the video. The oh, shot yeah? of her standing in front of the burning tree. <laughs> the oh, God. It's such a good no! shot. Oh, I collected a bunch of actually good shots. <laughs> actually, that is that is a great shot. That's like the most like, memorable shot. The devastation the behind her and shit. All right, but we yeah. get flagged for for pedophilia, and we both get you know attacked send, from send they me dispatch what you got, when they and dispatch I'll drones from HQ of YouTube, and we both get our asses obliterated from the face of the earth. Uh, just know that I you can't see any nipples. It's safe. For yeah. Work. It's it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> How old are they again? Are they, are they 12? Is, uh, 12 seems like the right number to me. Is that right? You know, they're from another 
world. Now, uh, p putting aside, uh, you know, <laughs> age of consent, I'm just wondering how old these characters are. We don't or know how Rico. long it takes the sun to go around the moon in that world, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. No, let's <laughs> let's avoid answering that question, everybody. All right, that's uh, that's all I've got. I'm I'm all set. Uh, but I will, right. will say that um, I'm very excited. Oh, I, I didn't even say we met at the end. Ozen is on the scene. The immovable Ozen. We're already there. You were right that the uh, the like just the yeah. camp was closer than I thought. She's already here. This is obviously going to be an important character. She has been described as like the most physically powerful human like in the world. Yeah. I'm just saying that this all sounds pretty dope, and I'm really excited to meet her and uh, and the blue girl. They both seem pretty cool. Let's do it, folks. Next week. Yep. All right. See you then. Bye-bye.